my fellow Limitless HBICs. How you doing on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? Hello. It's November 1st. It's the day after Halloween, so don't tell me about my Halloween decorations. Still being that I don't want to hear. Um, let's, let's jump right in. Let's get to it. Um, your girl's feeling a little under the weather today, and I just spilled shit all over me, and I don't care. I'm still recording the video because I'm in the mood. Um... My belly's off. No, I'm 100% he healed and perfect. I feel fucking amazing. Um, yeah, there you go. That's how you handle shit, okay? So, if you need help figuring out what's going on between you and your manifestation, please feel free to email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com, okay? Um, side note, yeah, you might be on a wait list, especially if you're a brand new person to me. You might be slightly waiting, okay? Um... There are several people who have, in, in the recent moments of time, have purchased coaching from me. Have no fear. I'm coming. You will be scheduled very, very soon. Scheduled, as in uh, speaking with me very soon. I will be working. I, I started working on it this morning, so some of you did get emails. Um, and I will be working on it throughout the day. So just don't panic if you've purchased coaching. I'm coming, okay? Trust me. Once you pay for something when it comes to me, you're on my mind. It's on my shoulders. So have no have no fear I'm coming. Okay. Um number two. Um I have a channel membership which will be um being divided. Uh not like by people, meaning I'm going to be making two separate channel memberships. Have no fear. If you are joining now and you decide you want to be in the other channel membership, I will go into more detail about the different channel memberships um once it's, they're officially live on my channel. Um, and also the one is staying the same. It's still going to be $34.99. That's not changing. Um, but if you think the other membership is going to be more of your deal, no worry. Anybody who is a channel member at the time of me starting the new membership. So there's, there's going to be two separate memberships. Anybody who's already a channel, a paid channel member, you're going to have access to both channel membership live streams, uh, for a month. That way you could clearly make your decision, you know, which one you want to be in. And then you will have to uh, make your choice from that point on after one month, four weeks. So four full weeks that you'll be able to access. And what it is, it's, it's going to be handled exactly the same as my current membership. It's just um, one is going to be strictly topic related. You might also want to look at it as maybe more advanced. As in, we're not talking about circumstances in one of them. The thirty four ninety nine group is, is going to be staying as, you know, topics only topics not circumstances not old stories not coaching topics and when i say topics i mean it's it's a way to pump you up the more you you know get involved in talking about manifestation the better you fucking feel speaking from experience so that's what that group's going to be about and of course you if you have success stories to share in that group yes you are more than welcome to share them but that's kind of what it's going to be and the other one is going to be more of a group coaching slash hot seat coaching type um group so yeah that should be happening very very shortly um yeah so there's that i have instagram i have uh tiktok and i would love for you to follow me fucking everywhere okay why wouldn't you want to hang out with this bitch all the time okay because i'm fun as fuck yeah okay let's jump in now um i was asked a question in my on my community tab under the posting where I asked if you have state related questions or any of the other video requests, please put it in there because I'm going to record videos from that. So if, if you're watching this and you wish I would make a particular video, please go to that because I check it every day. I do because that's where I'm deciding what kind of a video I'm going to record if I don't go live. Um, and feel free, like there's no topics off limits. I know the post itself is centered around states, but I mean it. If there's something else you want me to talk about, and if I already have a video on it and you just want me to get in there more, put it down. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, zhuzhing up some of my old videos, right? Because I've, I've changed a little bit, right? So there's that. Um, so this, there was a question asked under that tab. And there was a question that was asked in my live, my special Halloween live yesterday that they tie together. And they're two different people. So I'm like, okay, we got to talk about this. And we're going to be revisiting today. Uh... Revision. Revision along with your manifestation game, which you know, still can tie in with states of consciousness, obviously, right? Because we're always in a state. 
But I'm going to start by doing my normal and most favorite thing to do is reading a little Neville. Now, this is not from a Neville book. This is from a Neville lecture. It is from the, I think it was 1954. Let me cheat and look. Yes, 1954. And it's the, the Pruning Shears of Revision lecture of Neville Goddard, okay? And, you know, I just want to say that when I, I read this, um, when I was really learning as much as I could about anything Neville, to be honest, I could sense, and it's still my opinion, that Neville loved revision. And if you read his books, he obviously mentions revision more than once throughout all of his collective books, you know, teachings or lectures, however you want to look at it. And, and he says this one line in this before I actually read what I intended on reading you that just made me think, yeah, he, he was into this shit. I feel that this morning's subject, that this could be it. That if I never said another word and you heard it and believed it and really used it, this would be the planting that would spread from us here that tomorrow could not undo. For it is magic, this pruning shears of revision. It really is not only the achievement of objectives, but if you do it daily, it will awaken in you the spirit of Jesus, which is continual forgiveness of sin, right? And if you ha are someone who have not really dived in reading Neville, you know, his explanation of what the Bible refers to as sin, what it really means is sin, sinning, sinners are people who are not working, focusing, manifesting their desires, right? That's in Kim talk. That's not in Neville talk. But that's what it is. Those of you who look at your desire, deem it too too good to be true, too hard. Or, you know, we'll, we'll talk like money, you know, wanting to be a multimillionaire. And anybody out there, especially those not awake, you know, those who are so limited by that thinking that, you know, that's not for me, that's, that's only the top 1%, or, you know, that only happens to certain people with certain lifestyles, that, that would never happen to me, blah, 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 right? That's sinning. That's sinning not giving in to your desires, okay? And for those of you who are awake, yeah, you're sinning. Every time you're giving up on a desire, you're sinning. That's sin. Oh my God, so me focusing on what I want is me being a good girl? Easy, yeah, easy. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. So I'm gonna skip around in a, a few different things, okay? Before I read, what, what the type of questions that I was specifically asked is both, both HBICs asked me about forgiveness and having feelings of guilt when it comes to utilizing revision. Now, this can go in two different directions. This can be when we need to forgive and forget with our specific person or when we, we, we would want forgiveness from our specific person from maybe something that we did. So it goes both directions, right? And I'm going to try to take you in both directions so this can apply to anyone. Um, but we're going to start with what I was specifically asked. And in both cases, both people felt a sense of guilt for something they had done in their 3D. Um, I think, I don't know if both of them were around their, their SP, but I think, I think that it is. Um, you know, and specific person can be family, it can be friends. So if anybody out there is, is in a situation where you feel bad that you've done something, this can still apply to you, right? All right. So when it comes to when we feel guilty for something we've done, the, one person felt guilty using revision because this person felt like it was saying, you know, if I try to revise this and make it as if it never happened, then in a way that's me, you know, not taking responsibility for what I've done. And fuck, do I instantly respect that person? And I believe I conveyed that message in my live stream, but holy crap, what a wonderful person you are. And I mean that because no, darling, the fact that you even have the guilt feeling within you shows that you're showing some lum some semblance of remorse and you've got a little bit of morality going on and there's nothing wrong with that. And kudos to you, but we should be living free. Now, I don't mean in the case of you can go on a damn murdering spree and then revise that, right? We're not talking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs shit. 
But when we've hurt another's feelings, first of all, there, if you've watched enough of my videos, you do know that I am someone that, you know, we don't need to be doormats because we're manifesting. And at the same time, if we owe someone an apology, fucking give it. And it sounds like you have. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you're remorseful over something. But once you've done that, now let's revise it, right? And for any of you out there who don't have the courage to give the apology, that doesn't make you a failure either, right? We're, we are all different types of personalities, right? But I cannot stress to you that I, I respect you for feeling the way you do, but at the same time, okay, we can stop torturing ourselves now too, right? You feel bad. You're feeling guilt. Now it's time to let's let that go. And especially if you've already showed it in the 3D to your person, fine. Now let's move on. Because the hanging on to the guilt feelings isn't doing you any good in any way, shape, or form. And the reason why I say that is because it's going to perpetuate, right? Just like hanging on to anger and resentment perpetuates. And the only people that get hurt are ourselves when we hang on to those feelings for another person. Even when it's when we are in the wrong. So I will tell you how I handle my own 3D. If I feel, if I have wronged someone, especially someone that I, I love or consider a good friend, blah, 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 family member, lover, I am the type that will feel really bad, very remorseful. I will feel guilty and I will go out of my way to express my apologies to that person. I will try to make it better because I just want to feel better and I want them to not be upset with me so that I can feel better, right? But I do allow myself to revise because I want you to look at revision as, and I, I must make this clear to any of you, and I've seen you in my comments, that's why I'm addressing it and I address it in the live stream. To any of you who do not believe that revision changes or alters the memories of all parties included in the revision, I cannot stress to you how wrong you are. You are outer levels wrong. Now, because you don't accept that, and because you think it only changes how you're feeling about the circumstance, that is what you will experience in your 3D because this is the law of assumption and what you assume to be true will be true. So you'll continue to have that experience. But in my opinion, my God, you are limiting yourself. You, you are harming yourself. And I say that because you might change how you're feeling about it, but it never really goes away. You could be lifting the burden of a circumstance off another person in your 3D by doing revision. But because you think that it won't, right? And that's your belief. So that's what you'll experience. You're robbing yourself and that person. I, I sincerely think that. So I never try to impose what someone should do in their own 3D to your life. You got to do what you want. But to any of you else out there, please listen to me. It will alter the memory of all included you're cre How can you accept that you're creating your own reality, but think you're limited to change a memory? You, you only believe in the power going forward. You don't believe in backward. And for me, that tells me you need a little more time really understanding what manifestation is, who you are as consciousness or awareness. Okay? And I'm saying that from love, not judgment. It would serve you to do a little more reading yourself. And you don't got to pick Neville Goddard if you don't want to. There are plenty of other authors out there who have touched on this subject. Okay? But I needed to say that. Okay? God, this video is going to be long. <laughs> a coupling off of that is any of you dealing with guilt, feeling guilt, feeling like you don't have the right to revise because that means that you're not taking responsibility for something. No, take a look at it as you, you could also be lifting the burden over your specific person, the person that you're feeling guilty about hurting, this could remove the hurt from them too. It's worth it. Revise it, okay? Now, this is how we do it. At the end of my day, I review the day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. 
I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings, and then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it, and having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day, and I do it over and over in my imagination until this seeming imagined state begins to take on to me the tones of reality. It seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it, and I have found from experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. When I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow. For in me, I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. You are the garden, right? The garden is within you're getting out the weeds. You're getting out anger, resentment, hurt feelings, right? We're getting rid of that so that we can manifest what we want forward, yeah? And what he's talking about is, granted, if you, you don't need to revise every single thing in your day if you don't want to. But if something happened throughout your day, and that's just one way of doing revision, right? We can go back to actual events and revise those as well, right? But this was Neville's way of revising, and he did it every single day. He revised a day as if he lived the way he, he wanted to live. And if you've been around here, you know the Mrs. J.E. success story from Neville Goddard is my favorite one because what did she do to manifest her specific person? She revised her day every single night. She twisted an imaginary uh, wedding ring on her finger as she imagined being in the marital home, married to her man, right? Although she may have lived her entire day as a single woman living with roommates, she revised it for a month, manifested her specific person after, like within a month. And they were married, what, six, six months later? So revision is a gift. Use it. Don't feel overwhelmed by guilt because you want to utilize revision. I know from experience it will not only bring about these objectives and bring about these changes, but the glorious thing is it awakens in you who use it, the spirit of Jesus, and you find yourself then not just justifying, but forgiving. And you will realize that freedom and forgiveness are indissolubly, I can't say this word, indissolubly linked. Indissolubly. God, devil. You cannot be free and not forgive. For the one that you would bind and judge and condemn anchors you by your own judgment of him, for he is in you. And so by identifying him with the ideal you want to re really realize you free yourself. You are told forgive and you and you shall be forgiven. Forgive not and then you shall not be forgiven. It's automatic. It can be otherwise for the whole springs from you who behold it. And as you begin to practice it, the very spirit arouses itself within you and you know that you are he that others spoke about and thought lived 2,000 years ago. So when you realize it, you realize it through actual knowledge. You know it. No argument. You don't tell others. You know that you are he. And then you will read the words in the ninth of Hebrews. He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And you will know you are the one that put away sin by the sacrifice of self. And by the sacrifice of self, it's not being a brave one who throws himself in the line of fire to protect a brother. It doesn't mean one who gives his body to be burned, one who was nailed on a cross, but the self of man is the sum total of all that that man believes and consents to is true. So that's the self that is sacrificed. And what he's saying in Kim talk is, as I mentioned, when we hang on to past hurts, things you're angry about, things you hold resentment about, towards your specific person. Now, I'm not talking about shit you've done. That's, we're gonna, we're, 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 you know, the whole beginning of this video is about shit you may have done. That's why you gotta let it go. You gotta forgive yourself too. But this is when, you know, they've done something to you. So we'll use, you know, maybe specific person cheating with a third party. Yes, that hurts and your feelings are always valid. But in order to bring back the version of them that's truly in love with you and that would never do this to you ever again. 
We've got to let go of anger and resentment and those hurt feelings so that you can manifest the version of them you want because they are only ever reflecting us. And he's referring to Jesus and, you know, he who was the one 2,000 years ago. It's because, you know, Jesus is within. God is within, right? It's within us now. We have to forgive for past events from others. Now, I'm not talking abusive situations. That's a whole other type of video. I'm talking about basic bitch relationship hurts, arguments, things like that. And, you know, and with working with people... And living my own life, to be honest. When someone does something to me that hurts my feelings, yeah, the ego bitch in me wants to hang on and wants wants to get my vengeance. Yeah. I I was a professional grudge keeper. But I'm learning through this entire journey, my life. I, I gotta let that go. I have to. Or else I'm never going to change. And neither are you. We're never gonna shift in. To the version we need to be of ourselves. To get the versions of people that we want. We have to start seeing them as the version we want them to be. Because all of them are already within us. That's what Neville's talking about. You got to forgive. You got to find a way around the anger, hurt, and resentment in either direction. Whether you're feeling that anger and hurt for yourself. Or meaning something you've done. We got to let it go revise it so you can let it go and then the other direction if they've done something to you okay and i know some of you want to instantly justify why you feel you are right for hanging on to this judgment and i've coached enough of you that you've manifested your person back and you've done nothing but argue with them when they came back about what they did what they did to you because you feel justified in that anger and that hurt and that's why I tell you, your feelings are always valid. You're feeling hurt, I understand. You're not wrong for being upset over these events. But once you've decided that you believe in manifestation and you're on your manifestation game, to hang on to those feelings and emotions and judgments, grudges, you are damaging you. You're, you're holding yourself trapped as a version of yourself that will never manifest the version of them. And I don't say that to scare you. I say, hey, you've got the power to not be that. You have the power right now in this moment. Every single moment, we're shifting states. Another way to look at that is every single moment, we're selecting the reality to be in. Anger, resentment, hurt keeps you trapped in a reality that you don't want to be in anymore. You don't want to. You're in a victim state. I know victim state very well. I was married to it. We don't want to be there because that not only traps us, it traps them. Look at it as every time you shift your state, you shift your specific person's state as well because they're only ever reflecting you. So hanging on to painful memories, being angry and upset, we've got to deal with that. And if you're in this moment right now, you're living that experience, we got to deal with that first. We got to find a way to work around it so that you can let it go. And what helped me was remembering who I am. No, no, no. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect. But I have to let things go so I can actually get what I want in the 3D. Right? Right? It's only hurting us to hang on to things. Utilize revision. Let's revise these things together. Now, I read from the lecture on how Neville does. He revises every day. You can use revision through scripting, which I have a video on that, okay? It's basically just writing out how you would want that event to have actually gone, and you're rereading it several times a day for a minimum of one to two weeks until the new revised memory is what you are thinking of first. Or if you're a visualizer, you're going to visualize that moment. You're going back to that moment and changing it. And however you get into that moment of your visualization, practice, relive the event as the way we wish it had went, right? You don't have to marinate in painful memories. 
change them, change them. And if that feels too much, then begin using affirmations that never happened. And anytime it enters your mind that never happened, this is what happened. I don't even understand why I'm thinking that. There are multiple ways to use revision, hence why I'm going to have that revision um, thingamajigger. I, I'm feeling off today, hence my can't come up with normal people words. If you're having anger, resentment, or even guilt feelings, whether it's you for something you've done or they did something to you, let's work on letting it go. Let it go. Let's work on that. If it's they did something to you, you ask yourself right now in this moment, what am I, what meaning am I giving that? What meaning am I giving that they cheated on me? I didn't feel chosen. I didn't feel good enough. I feared abandonment. They reflected it. So why are we still holding them responsible? If you believe and accept that you are the creator of your reality, then I am assuming you are accepting that they are only ever reflecting. So in a fucked up way, it's not even their fault, really. And when you revise things, you free both of you to revise. And revise your day. I love this one line that he said. If you take me seriously today, tonight, do not let the sun descend upon any vexation of the day. Just look at it. Don't deny it. Don't duck it. Look at it, that you may prune it and then reshape in it. Take the con conversations with your friends today. Were they pleasant? Were they arguments? No matter what it is, were they negative? Then rewrite the script and just imagine the conversation to have taken place that now you are rewriting for the first time. And it will take place for everything in your world that you behold. Though it appears without, it is within, in your imagination. And this wonderful imagination of yours is Christ Jesus. Imagination is the actual habitation of every created thing. No matter what you see in the world, it springs from your imagination. So that's where you go. That's the workshop, the garden of God. And now you have a mission. You have a purpose in life. It's a noble purpose because you have been selected to really become the chief gardener in the garden of God. And in the garden, you must have pruning shears. And pruning shears is revision. You simply revise. And as you revise the day, you repeal the day. For the day is not slipping into the past. It does not recede as people think. It is always advancing into the future to confront you, either pruned or in some strange weed-like state. Meaning, hanging on to resentment, angers, hurts, guilt, hanging on to any of that. You think because you experienced it, now it's over. It doesn't. It stays with you. It keeps you trapped and it shows up in our future. You know, time's an illusion. You hear what I'm saying? That's why I'm pushing this. Let it go so you can become the version of yourself, right? Or be in the state of yourself that has what you honestly desire. Not one filled with anger and resentment and especially guilt. You are absolutely responsible for every being you meet in this world. That's your responsibility. And he doesn't mean like Jesus, you, you know, you, you've started the war over in, you know, the Ukraine slash Russia, right? We're not talking that. We're talking what you're intermingling with, right? Now, everybody's got their own definition and on, on what they accept and what Neville means by that. But it's every being you meet in this world. That's what's, that's our responsibility. That's what he brings up in the lecture. So that's all I concern myself with. And no, do I revise every single goddamn person I encounter? Fuck no. I only deal with who I'm directly intermingling with, who I've got some affection for, right? So don't, don't overwhelm yourself. But if you're manifesting a specific person and you're hanging on to bullshit, it's time to let it go because they only showed up that way because it was a reflection of ourselves, our own self-concept. Yeah? Not to shame you. Not to blame you. 
but for you to see what power you have. Everyone must be answered. None must be discarded. Don't say one is impossible. There is nothing impossible to your imagination and your imagination is Christ Jesus. With him, all things are possible. Use him, stir him, wake him from his sleep. He has been sleeping through the centuries because he has slept. He has dreamed into being all these strange misshaped states. For the world only bears witness of the use or misuse of imagination. As we are told, he is the only thing in the world. What? He is the only thing in the world? Your imagination. For it is the habitation of every created thing. And by it, all things are made. And without it, it is nothing made that is made. So use it wisely. Use it lovingly. And any time you use your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you are at that moment literally mediating God to man. Imagination is the redemptive, redemptive power of the world. And you are actually mediating God to man by using it in a loving, wonderful way. Long story short... There is no circumstance. There is nothing you've experienced with any other person. Nothing. Nothing. For any of you out there worried, you're not going to be able to manifest your specific person. There is nothing outside of the power of Jesus. Your imagination is it. Everything in this world is here because of imagination, because of God. And you've been given the gift because you're awake to manifestation and your imagination, bad or good, is why you're experiencing what you're experiencing out here. So utilize it for what you want as opposed to making yourself feel better, marinating in shitty circumstances. And why I worded it that way is because a lot of us, when we discover the law of assumption, we're either in a really, really bad hurting place and eventually we start to feel a little bit better, but then we start feeling resentful and angry at our specific people for things they have done. And it almost feels good to be angry at them. And that's a way a lot of us have felt for the majority of our life. It's been our natural state, the victim state. It's time to get out of that state. It's time to let things go. So we can move you into a state where you're really experiencing what you want. There is nothing impossible of the I am. And the I am is in you. Okay? So let shit go. Let it go so you can get what you want. Okay? And on that note, see you tomorrow.